Yo, what's going on, guys? Then we are for simple snippets, and today's video tutorial is going to be on for loop, looping, or iterative control structure in Java programming. So, in the previous couple of video tutorials, we've already seen the conditional control statements, that is, the if else structure and the switch case. So, if you have missed those videos, you can check it out. And now we are starting off with the looping control statements, and the first loop that we are going to see is the for loop. So, with that being said, let's get started with today's topic. So before we start off with the practical aspect, that is the practical program, we'll quickly take an overview of what a for loop is and we'll just see a little bit of theory as well as the syntax and the flow diagram. So make sure you watch this video till the end of this video tutorial because at the end we are going to see a practical program on for loop. Okay, so coming back to the theoretical part, let me read out a little bit of definition on what Java for loop is. So the Java for loop is used to iterate a part of the program several times. So if the number of iterations is fixed, it is recommended to use for loop. So since this is a first loop, I know you cannot make references to the while loop, but while loop and for loop are pretty much the same. Only the for loop is used when the number of iterations is fixed. By the way, we use looping control statements when we want to perform a task n number of times. So instead of copy pasting that same code n number of times, we use for loop or while loop or any other do while loop, say for example. So this is the basic syntax of for loop. So we have to write down for, so for is a keyword. Then we have to give some initialization. I'll talk about what initialization condition and increment and decrement is in more detail when we see the practical program. So we have to initialize a variable. Let's say we can initialize any variable i for zero. Then we have to check for the condition. So the for loop will execute only till the condition is true. So this condition plays a very important role because if we give some wrong condition, the for loop might execute for infinite amount of time and that will crash your program. So I'll show you what that means as well. Then the code is executed. And lastly, the initialized variable is incremented or decremented depending upon our needs. Now this might be a little vague to you because we haven't seen the practical program, but you'll understand more when we see the practical. So let's move on to the flow diagram. So this is the for loop flow diagram. So as I mentioned, first the initialization happens, then the condition is checked. If the condition is true, the statements inside the for loop are executed. If the condition is false, the for loop exits and the control is taken outside the for loop. So till the condition is true, the statements are executed. Then the increment decrement happens. Again, the condition is checked. If the condition is true, again, the statements are executed. Again, the increment or decrement happens. And this happens n number of times as long as the condition is true. And once the condition is false, the program exits from the for loop. So this is what happens behind the scenes. And this was just a visual representation of the for loop. Now let's quickly jump to the programming part so that you better understand how the working goes. Okay, so quickly open up your NetBeans ID and create a project. I, you can see I have already created a project. So this is the question that we're going to program for. So let me just read out the question. Write a program to print table of five. So what we have to do is we have to print 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and this should go on till 50. Okay. Which means that we are printing the multiplication table of five. So that's what we are going to do in this program. So inside the main function, let's start off with the programming. And since this is a very simple program, we don't really have to initialize any variables. I'm directly going to start off with the syntax of for loop. So we have to type in for, so you can see it got highlighted because it is a keyword. Then opening and closing round brackets and opening and closing curly braces for the body of the for loop. So the first part is the initialization. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an int variable, which is going to be as an iterator inside the for loop. I'll tell you what iterator means in a minute. So what I'm going to say is i equals to zero. So this is the first part initialization, then a semicolon. Then we have to check for condition. So I'm going to say i less than 10. I'm going to start off with i equals to one. And I'm going to say i less than 11. I'll tell you why I did that then one more semicolon and lastly we have to add the increment or decrement so i'm going to say i plus plus so this part was the initialization part this part was the condition part and this part was the increment part now i'm going to print the table of five right so i'm going to say system dot out dot print ln and what i'm going to do is i'm going to say five star i that's it Th this is our actual program now i know if you're very new, you probably are still confused. We'll dry run each and every step what is going to happening. But let's see if this program runs first. Let me just save this and try to run this. You can see our Java program is running over here. And there you go. We got our output as 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45 and 50. Which means this is our desired output and we just printed that multiplication table of 5. Okay, so what exactly did happen in this program? So let's try to dry run this entire program. I'm just going to open up my notepad and I'm going to try to dry run it step by step. By the way, dry run means 
to actually note down every step and to see the variable values at every step on paper. So that's where that is what is called dry run. So let's start off with step number one. Now we know that this for loop ran for 10 iterations, right? Because we got 10 output that is we got 10 different lines. So starting off with step one at step one, what we did is initialization happened. So this happens only once. So I is equal to one happened, right? So now this int I variable is only existing inside the for loop. So for step one, I equals to one. The condition was I less than 11. So for step one is I less than 11? Yes, because I is one, right? So the condition was true. Now the increment and decrement happens at the last. So what happened is the for loop was executed. That is this statement was executed once. So what did we print? Five star I means five into I. The star is a multiplication operator. Now I value for the first step is one. So five into one is going to be five, right? So that's why output was five. Okay. So first statement was executed inside the for loop. And since there is only one statement, now the increment happens. So I plus plus is going to happen. And this plus plus is a post increment operator over here, which will add one value to the existing I variable. So increment operator just increments the value by one. So now step two will start. Step two. By that time, I has already become two in the step one itself. So now I is equal to two. Okay. Now initialization only happens once. So now this step is not going to happen. It is directly going to check the condition. So now it will check is I less than 11? Yes, because I is two as of now. So again, this system dot out dot print ln is going to be executed, which is inside the for loop. But this time I is equal to two. So five star two is going to be 10, right? So output here this time is going to be 10. So now you're getting how we are getting that multiplication table. Let's calculate one more step. So I'm going to say step number three. So now after step number two, I was again incremented by one. So I has become three. So for step three, I is equal to three. Again, three is less than 11, right? It is true. So this for loop is again going to be executed, but this time I is three. So five star I is five star three, which is five into three, which is going to be 15. So the third output is going to be 15. Now you can see that we are actually printing out the multiplication table of five. So now you get the idea, right? So I'm just going to skip to step number 10. So step number 10 will have I value equals to 10 because this is the last step. So when I is equal to 10, I is still less than 11, right? So at that time, the output will be five into I, which is 10. So output is equal to five star 10, which is 50, right? So this is the last output. Now what happens is I again becomes plus plus, which means I becomes 11. So for step number 11, when the for loop again goes to execute, it checks the condition for step 11, I is equal to 11. So it checks is I less than 11? No, this time it, the condition is false because I has become 11. Now 11 is not less than 11. It is equal to 11, but it is not less than 11, right? Which means that this condition has become false. So the for loop exits over here without executing the statement and the control comes outside the for loop. So that's why 55 did not get printed. So this is what happened in the for loop. And this is why we got this output of five to 50. Now, if you would have increased this number to 12, one more iteration would have happened and we would have got till 55. You can see the output 55. So this is how we already knew how many times we want to iterate. Now this I value could have started from zero, but since we had to multiply it, that's why I started off with one. So I wanted to start it off with five into one. So that's why I gave I equals to one. Now note that if I did not give this statement or this condition, I can keep this as blank and I can again run this. So this is also valid. Okay. In fact, I can completely erase this. I can completely erase this. And even then, the program will run just that I need to have two semicolons. But if I don't give the initialization, if I don't give the condition and if I don't give the increment, even then the for loop will run, but this will run for infinite number of times. Let me just show you what exactly I mean. If I run this, the output will go on and on. You can see the output is printing and printing and it's saying running and this will crash my program after some time. So this is basically known as an infinite loop. So you have to stop this and you always have to avoid an infinite loop because it will crash your program. So that is the reason why condition giving the condition is very important and you have to give the right condition. Otherwise the for loop will keep on executing itself and it, it will never stop. So that creates a situation where it is known as an infinite loop. So this is a general mistake that we at beginners level do a lot. So just uh, advise that try to keep your conditions proper and check those conditions properly before executing any real world application or real world program.
सो दैट्स इट फॉर दिस वीडियो गाइज आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड द वर्किंग ऑफ फॉर लूप फॉर लूप कंट्रोल स्टेटमेंट एंड इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो वील प्रॉब्लम सी द वाइल लूप so you'll better understand the difference between the two so that's it for this video guys i hope you like this video if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you get notified whenever i upload a new video tutorial so i'll talk to you guys in the next video peace